Welcome to the book reading program of 3ABN Australia Radio. Does your faith need a boost? Do you think that miracles only happened in Bible times? Think again. Compiled by Remnant Publications, the book Get Ready for a Miracle recounts true stories that prove that when we step out in faith, God displays His power in undeniable ways. Here is our reader, Sandra Ashton. This story is entitled, Dawn of a New Day. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7 to 8 says, The Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Listen. Be faithful in the face of hardship and discouragement, and God will grant a most wonderful experience. Difficulties will arise that will try your faith and patience. Face them bravely. Look on the bright side. If the work is hindered, be sure that it is not your fault, and then go forward, rejoicing in the Lord. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7, page 244. Those who work for God will meet with discouragement, but the promise is always theirs. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. God will give a most wonderful experience to those who will say, I believe thy promise. I will not fail nor become discouraged. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 335. It was a cold, rainy day and the wind was not helping. As the time drew nearer for the van to pick me up from canvassing, I began having a debate in my mind. Should I call it a day? Should I just walk a little slower and get picked up faster so I can warm up inside the van? It wouldn't be too bad, I reasoned in my mind. After all, my pants and socks were soaked from the first part of the day. The fact that I was freezing made every part of my emotions pull towards getting inside the van and calling it quits. Nevertheless, I prayed and decided to go all the way. There was not much time left on the clock anyway. Let me be faithful to the end, for indeed the Lord has promised to be with me. Praying in my heart for a divine appointment, I pushed forward. I rang the doorbell of what I perceived would be my last home. No one came at first, but finally a young woman cracked the door and asked, Can I help you? I proceeded with my canvas, but she was not interested. At this point, I glanced at her ear and noticed she didn't have earrings on, and for some reason, I thought it was an opportunity to ask if she was a Christian. Sure enough, she was Pentecostal, and because of my question, it gave more time for me at the door. Finally, she said, Can I at least offer you something to drink? With this, she invited me in. Continuing my conversation on her being a Christian, out of nowhere, she begins to tell me about a problem that has been perplexing her. She told me her sister went to an Adventist university and had been learning so much. She then grabbed her Bible, opened it and pulled out a small tract. The subject read, Sabbath or Sunday? She continued by saying that her mother-in-law is a current Adventist and was the one who gave her the tract. At that point, she had no idea that an Adventist literature evangelist was in her home. The topic had not even come up. She continued telling me how she continually saw Sabbath in the Bible and not Sunday and was very confused. I then looked up at her and said, I am a Seventh-day Adventist. She was dumbfounded. She just could not believe it. I then took the great controversy, 
placed it in her hands and told her it would clear up all the confusion. She grabbed my hand, looked me in the eye and said, You are the answer to my prayer. Four days ago, December 26, 2013, I knelt down at my bed in desperation and asked God to send me someone or a sign to explain this issue and what I was supposed to do. Then you showed up, she said. At this point, I was praising God because I realised what was taking place. I quickly glanced across the room and saw a big family Bible, the kind that the big bookers sell. I had mega books, but was very familiar with the big books. I had stored that into my memory for a later time. I took her information down and we exchanged contacts. I texted her the next day and told her to look in the back of that big family Bible for the question and answer section. Of course, I knew there was a section on the Sabbath back there and by the grace of God, she and her family came to church the next Sabbath. What was so thrilling for me was hearing her testimony from her point of view as she shared it with the church members. She said that she had watched the Bible series on the History Channel and her favourite was the story of Lot in Sodom. What was funny is that she said she invited me in because I looked like the angel that came to Lot in the movie. Here I saw a spiritual lesson because just as Lot showed hospitality to the angels and received the warning, this woman, by her hospitality, received the warning about the deception of Sunday and answers to her questions. She said, had I not pointed out the questions and answers in the back of her Bible, she would have never dreamed of looking there. Her doubts had been silenced and her questions had been answered about the Sabbath. She also expressed that the night I was there, she stayed awake until 3 a.m., reading the great controversy and how the change of the Sabbath to Sunday took place in history. She is currently taking Bible studies and by the grace of God will soon be baptised. This was the dawn of a new day for this family. Not only them, but also the night of cold and dampness turned into a new day filled with joy and rejoicing for me as one more family was brought to the Lord. A reflection associated with this story comes from Christ's Object Lessons, page 237. We are living in a time when the last message of mercy, the last invitation, is sounding to the children of men. The command, go out into the highways and hedges, is reaching its final fulfilment. To every soul, Christ's invitation will be given. The messengers are saying, Come, for all things are now ready. Heavenly angels are still working in cooperation with human agencies. The Holy Spirit is presenting every inducement to constrain you to come. Christ is watching for some sign that will be token the removing of the bolts and the opening of the door of your heart for his entrance. Angels are waiting to bear the tidings to heaven that another lost sinner has been found. The hosts of heaven are waiting, ready to strike their harps and to sing a song of rejoicing that another soul has accepted the invitation to the gospel feast. Dawn of a New Day was written by Ramon Gibbs, a Washita Hills College student. You've been listening to the book reading program by 3ABN Australia Radio, featuring Get Ready for a Miracle. For more information about this book, visit remnantpublications.com. Thank you.